Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on Manifested Victory TV. For those of you who don't know us, my name is Lena, and this is my husband, Dale. And today, we're actually gonna be picking up um, where we left off in our previous video. We're gonna, we're gonna continue uh, talking about having a true understanding of God uh, because it's so vitally important for us as believers to have a clear picture of God, of our Father, of His heart. Uh, of understanding the heart of God um, is crucial for us as believers if we're going to operate in the power and the authority and really to see the promises of God come to pass we have to truly know the Father's heart we have to truly understand the Father's heart and so that's what we're uh, going to be continuing to talk about today and we're actually going to be talking about sin and the law um, and this is probably going to be in two parts, but it's going to be really, really good. A lot of good information, probably some stuff that maybe some of you guys have not heard before. So we're looking forward to sharing this with you. But before we get started, let me just say a quick word of prayer and then we're going to jump right in. Father, we come before you today and we thank you for this opportunity to share your word with your people. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you and we welcome you into this place. Just come in and do what you do. Teach, guide, direct, lead, give a revelation knowledge. Lord, we thank you that all of those that are watching this video, that they have eyes to see as well as us, that they have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that are open and receptive, that are good ground to this seed that is being sown. Father, we just thank you you uh, for this opportunity to share this word and we just speak a blessing over all of those out there that are watching this video that are within the sound of my voice father we we thank you that as this word is shared that that revelation will come and that freedom will come from that revelation the word says that the truth will set you free amen but only the truth that you know the truth that you know the truth that you operate in will set you free so we thank you for the opportunity to share this knowledge with your people this day in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay, guys. So we got a lot of scripture. We got a lot of word to share in this one. Uh, got a bunch of notes. <laughs> so, um, like I said, um, in our previous video, we started off talking about um, how um, it's really impossible to have a relationship with someone or a good relationship with someone um, that you misunderstand. If you misunderstand someone's core nature and who they truly are, then it's going to hinder you from having a relationship with them or at least having a good, proper relationship with them. And sad to say, God has been misrepresented. And a lot of that misrepresentation comes from people um, reading the Old Testament, seeing how God dealt with people under the law, and also incorrect teaching, you know, incorrect teaching that we've heard, you know, from, from the church. And not saying that, um, you know, it was done purposely to, to mislead, um, it's just that, um, people don't understand how to rightly divide the word. And so they just take this Bible and they just run it all together, not understanding the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament and how God dealt with, um, you know, people in the Old Testament is different than how he deals with us today. You know, not understanding the fact, Hebrews 8, 6, that we have a better covenant with better promises. And so we have to understand uh, what covenant that we're under, that we're operating in, um, you know, first and foremost, we really got to understand what covenant we're operating in so we know how to move, you know, and I've heard the example used, and I think it's a really good example of a credit card. You know, if you have um, an expired credit card, okay, you may have, you know, say you have a visa, right? And you may have a $5,000 credit limit on that visa, but that visa is an old card. Okay, that card has expired, you know, and you've gotten a new card in the mail, you just haven't bothered to, to open up the mail because you're too busy or whatever. So you hadn't opened up the mail, so you hadn't got that new card and you haven't activated it. So you're still trying to operate with that old card. You're still trying to make purchases, you're trying to make charges, you're still trying to move with that old card. But whenever you do, it's getting declined. And you're like, wait a minute, I know there's money on this account. I've got a $5,000 credit limit, but every time I try to make a charge, it's getting declined and I'm not getting anywhere. And you're not realizing, okay, this card is old. It's expired. 
I'm trying to move and do and operate with an old card. I need to go in my mail, dig out this new card, activate this new card, and then I can move and operate and do and get done what I need to get done. Same way with the Word of God. You got a lot of people still trying to operate under the Old Testament. And when they operate under those Old Testament standards, they're not seeing the promises of God come to pass. They're not seeing the power of God manifest. And they're getting frustrated and thinking, oh, well, it's God, you know, for whatever reason, God's mad at me. He's not wanting to bless me, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, um, not understanding they're operating under that old covenant and they need to come on over to the new covenant, pull out that new card. And then when, when they get that new card and start operating with that new card, now things are going to start flowing. Amen. So that, you know, is an example, but just so you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about, that's what we see going on a lot in the church. So hopefully that's um, what we're shedding light on here today. Our New Testament, the difference, you know, under the law, the fact that we're no longer under the law and just the overall true nature of God. I have here on my notes, people think that God is harsh, you know, that he's angry, that he's unforgiving, that God is just sitting up there in heaven, just waiting for you to sin. Cause when you sin, uh, I'm going to punish you. You know, something is coming on you. Some kind of judgment is coming on you because you sinned, you know, and people misunderstand, you know, they're misunderstanding God because they're looking at it under the law, under the old Testament. Now under the old Testament. Yeah. If you did good, you got good, but if you did bad, you got bad. Amen. And so the old Testament under, or I should say the law, when people were under the law, the law was all performance based. Again, you do good, you get good, you do bad, you get bad. It was all about your performance. And so people look at how God was dealing with people under the Old Testament and they just assume, okay, well, that's just how God is. Not understanding, again, that we have a totally new Testament now. We have a better covenant with better promises now, you know. So uh, that's, uh, that's one thing we're hoping to shed some light on. You know, many people think that God, and here's the thing, y'all get this, get this. Many people think that God gave the law to help man overcome sin, but that's not what the scripture says. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. It says, the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So notice that this is saying the strength of sin is the law. Hmm. Why would God give something that would strengthen sin instead of strengthen man? Think about that for a minute. This is clearly saying that the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So now people are thinking, oh, God gave us the law so that we could live by the law. You know, God gave us the law to, to help us overcome sin. But first Corinthians here is saying just the opposite It's saying that the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So again, the question is, why would God give something that would strengthen sin instead of strengthening man? And the answer is, it's because sin had already beaten mankind. Man just didn't know it. Man thought he had a handle on things. Okay, so let me share this scripture here with you in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. And I actually have it in my notes. It says, for in measuring themselves and comparing themselves amongst themselves, they are not wise. So back then, before God gave the law, you saw people comparing themselves amongst themselves. And so they were thinking, yeah, I'm okay, I'm not that bad. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, say you have a person and they were a murderer, right? Okay, well, here I am, maybe I'm an adulterer, okay? Maybe I'm a thief. Maybe I just, you know, stole something from somebody or maybe I just lied to somebody, you know, whatever. But they were, comparing themselves amongst themselves. So they were saying, okay, well, you know, maybe I lied a little bit on this, you know, maybe I cheated a little bit over here, but at least I'm not like this person. At least I'm not a sinner, you know? Well, maybe, you know, I didn't give like I was supposed to, and I wasn't nice to this person, but, oh, at least I wasn't an adulterer, you know? You understand what I'm saying? So they were comparing themselves amongst themselves and they were saying, hey, you know what? I may not be perfect, 
but at least I'm not like this person over here. At least I'm not doing that, you know? And so people were deceived. They were actually thinking, hey, I got a handle on this sin thing. You know, I ain't so bad. You know, it's not, you know, things aren't so bad. But people didn't realize how awful sin was until God set the standard. Here's the thing. Um, the whole society was sinking and they didn't know it. So that's what the law did. It showed how sinful man really was. It made people aware of sin. So um, let me try to explain what I'm saying here. Before the law. Okay, because in our last video, we were talking about roughly we've had a 6,000 year period since the time Adam was on the earth until today. So from Adam all the way up until Moses, that was roughly a 2,000 year period. God was not imputing man's sin against him and man was just living. God was being merciful to man's transgressions and that's what the case was. But when Moses, by the time Moses came on the scene, Mankind had gotten out of control. Again, man was running around comparing themselves amongst themselves and they were thinking, well, hey, you know, we're not that bad. Not thinking that they had a handle on things, not realizing how sinful they really were, right? And so God said, hey, I gotta do something here to restrain mankind because this sin thing has just gotten out of control. And so God gave the law to restrain mankind. God gave the law to kind of rein man in and say, hey, look, okay, in your mind, you're thinking that you're okay because you're saying, okay, I might be a liar, but at least I'm not a murderer. So God gave the law to show his holy standard. He gave the law to say, okay, well, this is my standard. Okay, this is what it really looks like to be righteous. Okay, this is what it looks like to not have any sin in your life. And so that was the purpose of the law, to show man how sinful he really was, to bring sin to the forefront, so to speak. Yeah, it was to amplify sin um, because <coughs> where there's no law, there's no sin. Uh, so if you got a baby and... Um, you let that baby stick his finger in that outlet over there on the wall and you don't stop him and you don't say you don't give him a law don't stick your finger in that outlet and you let him do it without punishing him without disciplining him then that baby gonna keep doing it only because you're not telling him not to so if you're not telling the baby not to do it he think it's okay even though it's not okay it's bad so in a sense, that's what God wasn't punishing mankind for sin. So they thought it was okay. And so it had got so out of control, like she was saying, that they were comparing themselves with each other. And so, but since God wasn't punishing sin, they felt like it was okay. So God had to bring punishment to sin. He had to bring a law and set forth a law because without a law, there's no transgression. So that's why he gave the law to let people know and to amplify when they were sinning. So they'll know it's wrong because now it's coming with punishment. So that's why he gave it. It wasn't designed to make us better. He knew when he gave it that we couldn't keep it, but it established a standard of holiness from God to let people know if they couldn't meet that standard, then there was punishment behind it. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what it is there's a scripture and i'll look it up and have it in the video that says i would not have known lust you know lest the law said thou shalt not lust so basically what it's saying and the and there was a lot of things that people were doing they didn't even realize it was sin to god they thought they were okay with it but the law really strengthened sin and brought to the forefront everything that God considered sin. Like I said, man thought he had a handle on things and he figured as long as I'm not running around killing people, I'm okay. But man was extremely sinful. He was living in sin all day, every day. And so God gave the law to show them, hey, even this thing that you think is not bad in my eyes, is still imperfect, it's still sin. So God had to really show mankind how sinful they really was. They really were, was, are. <laughs> you know am so god had to that was the purpose of the law to show man how sinful he was um 
I have um, here, let me go to my notes here. I have the law had no mercy attached to it. And this is why people think that God was so harsh because I mean, most of the stuff, if you missed it, it was punishable by death. I mean, there were so many things. If, if you know, the first man who broke the, the law after it was given and picked up sticks on the Sabbath to make himself something to eat, he broke the law and he was put to death for picking up sticks. Okay, so, I mean, the law, it didn't play. There was no mercy attached to it. And here's the thing. You know, people, like I said, they were comparing themselves amongst themselves and saying, okay, well, maybe I did this, but at least I didn't do that. But if you miss it in one, you miss it in all. You know, if you missed it, if you were guilty of one sin, you were guilty of the whole thing. The law, it gave no mercy. Um, you know, if you did 99 things right and missed one, the law is going to amplify that one thing that you missed. It's not going to tell you, hey, you did 99 things good. You're okay. Uh, -uh. The law is going to amplify that one thing. I have a scripture here, uh, James chapter two, verse 10. And it says, for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay, so that's clearly showing there was no half, no half stepping with the law. Again, it had no mercy. Either you keep it fully 100% or you've missed the whole thing. Like I said, if you kept 99 rules and you just kind of messed up on one, you messed up on the whole thing. It was either 100 or zero. <laughs> there was no middle ground. Okay, so let's say... Um, we're at, we're at track We're you know, we're at like, say at a high school or something and you know how they have the track, you know, and one lap is a quarter of a mile and you know, the, the track there. Okay. So say we're all there at the track and I have a gun, right? And I say, okay, if you can't run one lap in 30 seconds, I'm going to shoot you. Right. I mean, one whole lap in 30 seconds. I mean, I don't know anybody who could do that. I mean, probably who's one of the fastest person people in the world, um, that Shakira and I'm, and I'm sorry if I'm, mispronouncing her name but you know that uh the runner and she's like super fast okay like the fastest person in the world i don't even think she could make like one lap in 30 seconds i don't know but she might but i don't think she could the point is that's an impossible that's an impossible task the best runner is not going to run a whole lap in 30 seconds so if i'm standing there with a gun and i'm telling you okay if you don't make this lap in 30 seconds i'm going to shoot you there's nobody that can do it there's some people that can't even walk Okay. You might not even be able to walk. So how are you going to make a lap in 30 seconds? You know, maybe you're just on a walker and you're just barely making it. There's no way you're going to make that lap in 30 seconds. So guess what? You're getting shot. The point is that's an impossible task. Nobody can do that. Everybody would be condemned to death, right? It's the same with the law. The law was an impossible thing to keep. God never gave the law intending mankind to keep it because he knew we couldn't. The law was perfect. The law was holy, but mankind was not. Man was imperfect. So there's no way an imperfect man could ever keep a perfect law. God knew that. But the point of the law, again, was just to restrain sin, to bring sin to the forefront, to show man how sinful he was, to reset man's consciousness, so to speak, because man's conscience had been so seared by sin, God had to do a reset and be like, hey, look, this is righteousness. This is holiness. This is how far you've come from this. So that was the purpose of the law, to reset mankind's consciousness, to bring man back to center, so to speak. And again, to restrain mankind, to preserve Jesus' bloodline so that the Messiah could come into the earth. But that was the purpose of the law. It was never designed. God didn't think, oh, okay, who's going to be the first one to keep this law? He's getting a blue, a blue ribbon. Okay, he's getting top seat in heaven. You know, he's getting run the front row seats in heaven because he kept the law completely. God knew we would never be able to, to keep the law. Okay. So it was not given for that purpose. It was just given again to restrain mankind. I'm sure we're stressing that point for a reason to be kind of referring back to my notes so forgive me if I'm repeating myself there were people thinking I may not be perfect but I'm not that bad how many of y'all have said that I said that you know what God I may not be perfect but again at least I'm not a murderer I'm not a rapist I'm not a you know whatever I'm not going out doing all this stuff yeah, okay I told a little white lie you know 
I didn't commit adultery. You know what I'm saying? We do that today, y'all, comparing ourselves amongst ourselves, you know, but God says, no, when we do that, we are actually deceiving ourselves. It doesn't matter if you're a good sinner or a bad sinner. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. Okay, so God had to get people out of that self-righteous mindset, mindset, trusting in themselves, thinking, hey, I got this. I'm okay. And how did he do it? He gave the law. He gave these impossible standards that no one could live up to. So if this was the minimum requirements to be accepted, we were all lost. We would all need mercy. And again, that's what I'm saying. God gave this impossible law saying, okay, this is the minimum standard required. Okay. So if you want to be accepted on your own merits, if you want to be accepted by your own works, then this is what you're going to have to do. And it was impossible. No one could do it because like I said, the law was perfect, but mankind was not. We were imperfect and God knew that. So again, if that was the minimum requirement to be accepted, we were all lost. There was no hope. (laughs) We would all need mercy. And God knew that. And that's what he wanted the law to do, to bring mankind to his knees, to show mankind, I can't do this, Lord. I need help. And then God said, you're right. You do. Here's Jesus. Here's your savior. Believe on him. He's perfect. He came. He fulfilled the law completely. I understand that you can't do it. I just needed you to understand that you can't do it and to show you your need for my son. Amen. (laughs) So that was the purpose of the law. The law wasn't given to set man free from sin, but to let sin dominate man and to make man so hopeless of self-righteousness, of self-salvation, that we would come to the Lord, fall on our knees, ask for forgiveness and mercy. It was again, to make us realize that we needed a savior. Amen. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it doesn't get any simpler than that. You are uh, still to this day. Um, people have a problem receiving that because they, they don't realize sin. is not just the big 10, the 10 commandments. Sin it goes even further into your emotional realm or your thought realm. Jesus said, if you look at a woman in that lustful way, then that's adultery. So sin goes way deeper than most people think. So there is no level of sin with God. All sin is mm-hmm. sin. So you, the law just gave you 613 laws, rules, and regulations that you can't, like she was saying about James 2.10, you can't get 612 of them right and miss one and think you're going to get in. It was perfect, but we weren't. Mm -hmm. As a people, ever since Adam and Eve messed up, we're all born in sin. And we we have a tendency to sin. It may not be big Mm -hmm. sin, but it's wrong thinking, sense of omission. But there's people that still think that they're okay. And it's all because of what we're talking about now. They don't understand we're in a new covenant and we are okay under the new covenant, but you can't, you're not okay if you're still trying to live by those precepts that the law of Moses made. So yeah, this is very important. And and this is um, 101, Bible 101. You got to get this. If you can't get this, it's gonna hinder anything in the old and further along in the new covenant or your relationship with God is going to be hindered because you're going to have the wrong identity that God has. You're not going to see him as who you really are. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have here one of the biggest deceptions that Satan has put forward is to get the church to embrace the law and use it to tell people this is what you must do in order to be accepted or to be blessed by God. Now, that's a mouthful right there, y'all. See, Satan, (laughs) that's Satan's strategy is to deceive you to think what she just said. Mm Mm-hmm. That's his strategy. If he and, and, and so many people are still there. 
They're still believing that. If he can deceive you to think that, then he got you. Mm -hmm. I shared in the previous video um, that um, I used to have a friend, you know, long time ago, old friend. And they told me, I just want to live by the law. And, I, and, and this is like back when I was first, first learning about, you know, our new covenant and grace and the fact that, you know, we're no longer under the law, all that. And I was I was brand new at that, but I knew enough to know that that statement was wrong. And when and when my friend told me that, I just cringed like, oh, no. And and my friend argued me down. Oh, no, that mess right there. You're going to be sending people straight to hell and blah, blah, blah. And we had this serious debate. And see, I didn't have the knowledge back then that I have now. So I couldn't, you know, teach or express. But in my spirit, I knew that that was not right. But y'all it's so many churches out there. I grew up in a church like that that teach the law that live by the law now i'm not saying that we don't do what's right we're going to get into that you know i'm not saying that we just go out and live in sin heaven forbid of course not if you saw our last video you know that's not what we're saying but i'm just saying if you're in a church that's legalistic and legalistic and they are teaching strict adherence to the law is the only way to be accepted by god that's not right, y'all. Run. You need to leave that <laughs> church. You got to go. And certain things like that should, um, but, you know, I don't like to be hard on people. I try to show grace. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a cut and dry type guy, but, you know, now when I hear people talk like that, compassion comes, comes over me for them. You know what I mean? But that's, man, th this is 101. You got to understand the covenant that we're under because it's not based on your performance now under this new covenant. It's based on your believing and receiving Jesus, who was the only one that could keep the law. It's not that the law was bad. It was good. It was perfect. It was God. It's just since Adam, we're all bad. Ever since Adam messed up, we're all born bad. You know, born a sinner. So it's, you know, it's, 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 it's uh, important that you understand it wasn't the law per se that was bad. It was that mankind couldn't keep all 613 of them. So Jesus had to come to relieve us from that. Mm -hmm. so the law was good. The law was holy. The law was just. Amen. And the law was God's standard. And for 2000 years, again, God had just been lenient and had, and that was showing God's true nature, his mercy. And he just had not been trans, you know, he had not been imputing that sin against man. He was not holding man's transgressions against him, but God saw how bad man had gotten, how far man had gotten away from his, you know, original plan how sinful man was, and he had to give the law to rein him in, to restrain him, to reset his consciousness, because it was a perfect man, Adam, who sinned and caused us to all be born into sin. So it had to be a perfect man, Jesus, to deliver us from our sins. So God had to preserve that bloodline. So he had to restrain sin so that the Messiah could get here, so that Jesus could get here, so that Jesus uh, the perfect man, the second Adam, could fulfill the law completely, amen, so that he could pay that wage of sin. The wages of sin is death. That's why our Messiah had to die for us. That's why Jesus is our Savior. He paid the ransom for many, that he purchased us. Amen. So because Adam and Eve sinned, all their offspring, that's all of us. We were all born sinners by nature. Never committed a sin. Newborn baby born into the world. We were born a sinner. Okay. Had never committed a sin. We were just born with that sin nature and the wages of sin is death. So we were all headed to hell. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Headed to hell. We were all kind of just condemned to death. So to speak, you know, because we were born into sin, but God, that was not God's purpose. That was not God's plan. That was not God's heart. So he sent Jesus here. That's why he had to die. He had to pay that wage. He had to pay that price with his life. He had to die for our sins. That's what it means when we say Jesus died for our sins. God never wanted us to know how bad we were, <laughs> you know, but he had to bring it to the forefront to restrain us, to pull us in, 
to eventually save us through Jesus. Amen? Okay, so let me come back here to my notes. Um, okay, so I have a, a, a story here I just kind of wanted to share. I heard this example, and, and it's a really good story, and it's about a man trying to get into heaven. And some of y'all may have heard this. Okay, but here you have this man. He was a good man, righteous man, lived a good life, you know, and he died. So he's at the pearly, you know, he's at the pearly gates. He's at heaven and, you know, the angel is there and, and he's like, okay, well, why should you get in? In order for you to get into heaven, you have to earn a hundred points, right? You have to have a hundred points in order for you to get into heaven. And so the man is like, okay, okay, cool. I was a good person. I lived a good life. Let's do it. Let's go. What's the question? And so the angel asks, okay, um, how was your church attendance? Oh, I never missed a, I never missed a Sunday. You know, I've, he had his pen. I, I missed, I, I was at church whenever the doors were open. Sunday, Wednesday, you name it. I volunteered. I gave. I did all this and that. And the angel says one point. <laughs> so then uh, he says, okay, well, Okay, how, how did you treat your wife, you know? Did you ever cheat on your wife? Oh no, I was faithful to my wife the whole time, never cheated on her, loved her, all this and this and that. The angel says, okay, half a point. <laughs> he says, oh my God, half a point, you know. Um, the man asked him, okay, did you tithe? Oh, I was faithful, I gave, I always tithe, I always gave, I never miss giving, tithing, none of that stuff. The angel says, okay, half a point. And so they've gone through this. They've gone through about 10, 15 questions or so. And the man's only up to five points. And so finally he says, so he's like, you know, I've only got five points. And the man is like, dear God, you know, I can't do this. Please have mercy on me. And then the angel opens the gate and he says, welcome in. Come on in. That's the point. You can't do it on your own. You can say, I've got all the brownie points. I've been to church every day, never missed a day. I gave, I tithed, I was good, I was this, I was that. You'll never be good enough on your own. It's only by God's mercy, only by God's grace, only through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we can truly be righteous, be made the righteousness of God in Him, and have that access to heaven. <laughs> you, can, you cannot earn what Jesus gives to us as a gift. Mm -hmm. You couldn't earn it anyway. That's why it had to be God to put on a body to do it. Because mankind, the creation, couldn't do it because of what happened with Adam and Eve. There was no man that was born or would ever be born straight man that could have achieved that because we're all born in sin. So God himself had to come through uh, Mary and in a, in a body. God himself had to come through and become a man with flesh and do it. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, there's no other way. Your performance, since Adam messed up, your performance will never be the standard that God needs, that God requires. We can't do it on our own. So, okay. it can, so without Jesus, um, can't be done. Only through Jesus. Nobody is perfect enough. Only through Jesus. Hey, everybody. We're going to finish this discussion in a second video. I just want to say thanks for watching. And as always, continued blessings.